Hello again and welcome to the 19 April 2019 edition of Portsmouth This Week. Uh, our special guest today is Terry Cortvrend, the District 72 state rep and, and an old friend. Uh, I, I, this is the first time you're here as a state rep. You've been here before school committee and other stuff. Um, I just want to make sure people know that this, you're the state rep for District 72, which includes part of Portsmouth and part of Middletown. Correct. Uh, first, let me congratulate you on being elected. Thank you. Uh, I wonder if we could talk before we get in. I, you know, the main thing I'd, I'd like to talk to you about, and I think you'd like to talk about it, what is it like being a freshman rep up there? But before we get that, I think you have such a fantastic personal background. I wonder if you could just explain a little bit. Where did you come from? How did you get to Portsmouth? Uh, that's, um, I'm originally from Miami. I grew up there, and I discovered an opportunity to work on yachts, and that is really how I ended up, after spending time in the Caribbean, we ended up sailing up this way, oh. and so lived in Newport a couple of years, and then when my late husband and I decided you know, to think about, well, my daughter had been born, and uh, she was maybe three, and school was starting to come yeah. into our thoughts and that's when we moved to Portsmouth. It was actually shortly after the bond failed many years ago when they were voting on Thompson Middle School and we yeah. kind of were like, and probably like a lot of families yeah. in the mid-90s, we moved to Portsmouth. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, well that's the main yes. reason I yes. moved here too. I was in the Navy and we just wanted the best schools for our kids and yes. no, no competition. Exactly. Uh, why did you why did you decide to run for state office? You've had other local offices. Right. I'd spent 10 years on the school committee. I'd served on the Water and Fire District. I'd been on the Economic Development Committee for a short time, I think, with you, and on the uh, Tank Farm Redevelopment Committee. Are, so are I you still on that? I am okay, still on good. that, yes. Um, so I think that combination of experience, I thought, you know, made me qualified. I kind of looked around when I understood that the previous Democratic candidate, Linda Finn, was not going to run again. And she actually suggested that I might want to consider it. So I spent about a year thinking about it and yeah. looked around to think who else would maybe be interested. And I was really, um, I was, I think it was really important to get more women. I still think it's important to have more women up in the legislature because it's not even. It's yeah, not, and, you know. in fact, one of the things that always aggravates me on TV when they show Congress or the Senate, mm -hmm. it's a bunch of white guys. That's right. it. So <laughs> Nobody else, you know. Exactly. So I think we need more diversity, and yeah. uh, I just thought I had the experience that I could. Well, you know. I think you do, too. I mean, that's absolutely yeah. great because you did have some really good experience yeah. here. Now, and I'm a small business owner, too, and I think that provides a different experience different perspective. than yeah. a lot of, you know, a lot of the legislator, well, legislators and I, and are I'm lawyers. I'm particularly happy about the school committee because you know the insides and outs, what we can do, what we can't do right. in the schools, and that's really important, I think, for our future. Uh, what's it like being a new state legislator? Well, it is, um, it is being going from being a big fish in a small pond where it's easy to make decisions which is relatively easy with seven a seven member board like on the school committee or the water board uh, but up, you're dealing with 75 different people and it's that's a much different experience and then being at the bottom of the uh, of the pile too as a yeah. as a freshman legislator it's it takes a little getting used to because yeah, <laughs> nothing moves at the same pace absolutely and I guess the learning curve is probably pretty steep too there's though. so many different issues Do you, I think you spend I, I feel like I've been spending this first year trying to figure out what my lane is you know I know the things that I ran on were education the environment economic development. So I'm trying to find things that, you know, fit with me in those, uh, those are the areas that interest me most. Yeah. Now, let me, let me ask you kind of an unrelated question in a way, but there's a Democratic caucus of some kind, women's caucus, I think? There's, there is a women's caucus. Uh, after the election, also, there's, was a group of about 20 legislators that became the Reform Caucus. Many of them were women. Some were incumbents and some were freshman legislators. And 
we were primarily the group that did not support Nicholas Mattiello for speaker, and we had a list of reforms that we wanted to see, and one of which that was adopted was the 24-hour um, time that uh, for sub-A legislation, so that a sub-A couldn't just be brought right to the floor without legislators having at least 24 hours to review that, because yeah. that was not the case before, and unless the rules are suspended, which was another thing that we were fighting for, was for legislators to actually have to vote on suspending the rules, because right now the rules can be suspended, which they often are, um, at the end of session by just a vote of the minority and majority leader. And so then that 24-hour rule that's now in place will go out, the, out window, the window, yeah. go out the window, right. So that, we had wanted to change that, but that we were not successful. Now, now what, how do you relate to the caucus? Group? The Women's Caucus really doesn't have anything to do with the legislature. Okay. But the Reform Caucus was made up of all legislators. Legislators, okay. So, yes. so the, so the Women's Caucus would have to do with policies, Democratic? Uh, the Women's Caucus was more of just kind of exciting women to, to run for involved. office yeah, yeah. and to support other female candidates. Um, you know, and we have, they had issues that they, uh, that they support, but they don't really have any, they don't have any policy making yeah. ability. They're not really official. Of no, I know you've, you've already introduced three bills. Uh, I wonder if you could talk about what they are and why they're important to you. Uh, sure. Uh, I have uh, one called the, uh, the Jason Flat Act in memory of uh, Nathan Bruno, who was the student that sadly took his own life the last year I was on the school committee. And I've been working on that with the group of students that formed after Nathan's death, his friends primarily, the Every Student Initiative, ESI. And I've also, Jim Seveny and Senator Don Oyer are involved in that as well on the Senate side. Don Oyer's the uh, prime sponsor and, and Jim is the co-sponsor. Now is that primarily about education? That is uh, suicide, sorry, that's suicide prevention. And yeah, the Jason Flat Act is a bill that is um, already in 20 other states and it requires teachers, it makes suicide prevention training a requirement of teachers every annually. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a minimum of two hours. And uh, this, the, the bill we submitted had some other language that uh, the Every Student Initiative had requested that we put in. And uh, we, while there were no, um, no official opposition, there have been groups like the NEA and the Superintendents Association and ACLU, some groups that have asked us to massage the language yeah. and to, so we're working with the advocates, the ESI students, to um, to no. try to get that in a place where we could be assured passage. Yeah, uh, walk me through how you, how you the, how the that physical works? process of sure. submitting a bill. Even. Yeah, so uh, there's. Um, a group of lawyers that work for the legislature, uh, uh, the joint legislative LCS, anyway, group of lawyers downstairs in the basement at the State House that are dedicated to work with legislators. So you bring your idea for a bill and they write it up for you. They, you know, they obviously are checking to see if it's conflicting with any other laws. You give them, you, you might have a bill from another state or you might just sure. have ideas or, and it could be a resolution as well. It might not be a, a law, but it could be a resolution, uh, which would like bring attention to something, but it's non-binding. So they write it up and then you request that it get a hearing and then you, introduce the bill into play, as we call it, um, and you put it before the committee, gets assigned to a committee, and then you have a hearing. And you, the opponents and advocates can come and speak in support, and the committee will take uh, letters as well, emails, comments sure. in favor or against. So where along that process is, is this? Uh, 
It's been submitted. Yeah. It had a hearing. We had um, uh, overwhelming support from the ESI kids. We had a, you know, a large group of them. And we had uh, the Samaritans from Massachusetts. Um, there's a woman who uh, is from Rhode Island. She came and gave powerful testimony. Her, her brother had committed suicide. And um, I'm trying to, we ha so it had a, a very strong hearing and, and very, and Mr. Bruno, Nathan's father testified. So it was very emotional evening, yeah, yeah. but very powerful testimony. It's such a tremendous waste, you know. It's sad. You feel so bad about that stuff. Yes. But at least yes. you're taking action to try to give right. other and kids as help. are the kids. Yeah. So I'm, it's really the kids that, yeah. you know, motivate me that I'm so impressed with their... Okay, now the name of that bill again is? It, it's the Jason Flat Act. That's, the, that's the name of the bill in the other, um, in the other states that have adopted it, but yeah. we're calling it the Jason Flat Act in memory of Nathan Bruno. Okay. Yes. Yeah, well, that sounds certainly very worthwhile and something that uh, only good can come out of it. I right. guess as long as it's funded... You know, well, one, of the, one of the problems with all these things. It did not have a fiscal note. So when something has a fiscal note, it goes before the finance committee. Yeah. But this went through HEW, so it does not have a fiscal component, although I have been talking to some people um, about possible ways where maybe there could be some, maybe the state would have some grant funding or something that could yeah. support districts, uh, it would probably be worked into the district's professional development plan because there's other things that sure. they are required well, I, to. I just wonder if you ever think about sponsorship by, say, companies or businesses or people. Well, I mean, anybody that's had a kid that's even close to doing something like that would, I think, be certainly one of it's not a bad idea. I don't know that you would write that into state law. Yeah, no, you don't. You know, to. on the law side, but maybe yeah. that would be a way that you know districts could get it funded because I would imagine different districts would potentially have different spots. Sure, company absolutely. Company sponsorship, if if that were to happen. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's 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 a great cause, so I applaud you on that one. Um, the second one has to do with climate literacy, which is desperately needed, yes. I think, in this country. So uh, there is a, a document, a report that uh, came out in, I think, 2017 called Resilient Roadie. And it's a long laundry list of uh, recommendations and kind of a, a review around the state of where we are in uh, for resiliency and, and recommendations of how we should move forward. And one of the recommendations is to make sure that climate literacy is part of the K-12 curriculum. So this is just a resolution, which is non-binding, but it's a way to talk about the issue and to uh, start getting RIDE to think about it. They, RIDE did not think they were fully up to the task and ready for immediate adoption of, yeah. you know, creating the curriculum and all that would be needed to support the districts. But this is kind of putting it on their radar, and I would think I'd probably come back with um, a bill maybe next year or to, um, you know, just to follow up. You kind of put the resolution out there and see how the department does with it and, and yeah. then determine whether further. Well, I think a, a, a very powerful uh, indication was some, uh, articles in the Daily News about a week ago, I guess, about our water supply and how threatened Correct. they are to high, high tides. High tides, storm uh, water, yes. Unfortunately, I, there, also, there, there seem to be people that like to deny climate change. It's not really happening. It happens all the time anyway. Why do anything about it? Do you expect opposition? Well, this from a resolution, I, you're probably not going to hear, get a lot of resolution. It's when you put money to it. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> <about> it. yes. <laughs> yeah. And so going through that uh, resilient roadie and the other, um, the other recommendations is something that Rep Carson from Newport and I are working on. Yeah. And so I think for the coming year, that's going to be one of my focuses. Yeah, she, she was on, I, I can't remember whether it was clean water or... Yeah. Probably. something and, yes. and she was on the show and uh, it, it's just great to see people out there actually doing stuff like that use getting grants from the state I guess the right. federal government uh, and actually doing things they, they did a really nice mitigation thing now by the uh, uh, common fence point uh, mm -hmm. the rain garden. hall you know yes. yeah, that, that really yeah. nice rain garden yeah uh, 
So I, I guess the word is getting out slowly, you know, yes. and, and it's just uh, we got to persevere in and, this. And going back to the being a freshman, I just want to throw out a, uh, a note of appreciation. Uh, Rep Carson in particular, but many of the other Aquidneck Island legislators um, have been very supportive of me as a freshman, and I've just give a shout out to them because I've appreciated working with all of them and I think it's good for Aquidneck Island that we right can is, work yeah. together. And it also frankly from a civilian standpoint I like to see our legislators working together on on this kind of stuff. Yes. So keep it up. Thanks. <laughs> um, the third one, third bill, uh, Parents with Disabilities Bill of Rights. Yes, uh, this is uh, co-sponsored on the Senate side by L Senator Lou De Palma. And this was brought to my attention by actually a campaign volunteer who is visually impaired. And he's a high school student in Middletown High School, Chris Bove. And he's um, a very astute young man. And he uh, brought this legislation to my attention. Uh, it had gone through last year, but the co-sponsor or the prime sponsor had not been reelected to office so he asked me if I would introduce it and I did and uh, so this one's not brand new to it went, I've introduced it before the HEW which is the Housing Education and Welfare Committee and it's not new to them because they saw it last year although this had some cleaned up language that posed a problem for it getting passed last year so this too uh, had a large uh, group of supporters that came out. Um, what we found uh, is that uh, parents of newborns in particular, particularly blind people, it seemed to be the majority of parents affected, but they are, uh, when their baby's born, before they even take the baby home, they find themselves having to kind of defend their their, their abilities, right, their, right to, to do their it, abilities, yeah, yeah, to, uh, yeah. Um, with DCYF and social workers, and it just seems, you know, unfair. I'm fine with if there is a legitimate concern, you know, probably that as a result of an incident that happens, but just to automatically assume that because somebody's visually impaired that they can't be a parent. Um, so, so with, with this particular. This is a bill. Yes. So this, this is a bill. Presumably, go, get into law at some point. Yes. And uh, probably put some restrictions on what the state can do. Uh, right. What the, it's really of, gonna the main goal is to have more training in hospitals for the social workers that are working in hospitals, so that they have a more sensitivity and a more understanding about what people with disabilities can do and can't do and you know even people with developmental disabilities if you think about it we're offering all types of support for uh, in the workplace and um, in housing we have changed the way we're moving away from group homes and having uh, individuals with developmental disabilities live in the community with um, with you know individual families yeah. uh, so why would we it seems like this area of parenting that we're not we're totally not aligned with all the other initiatives sure. that we're taking to allow people to you know develop into the okay now do you cells. think there's any chance that this bill would pass this year or it, it may because they had heard it last year uh, the changes have been made there's been very little pushback we are working with some potential minor tweaks with DCYF um, there was another uh, representative representative Bennett had um, he was putting in a similar bill and he didn't realize that I had put it in so he withdrew his he's supporting my bill so I feel like I have uh, quite a bit of uh, support and had a very good hearing yeah. uh, and on the Senate side as well so I think it's been responded well, to you, well on you know both you're sides. really off to a great start I think uh, th all three of those are important issues what about I'm sure there are other issues that you'd like to pursue I mean you probably you know there's so many <laughs> that's, that's what, what I'm saying and when you think about uh, what's been astounding to me is there's thousands of bills between I know and how do you the, choose uh, and how yeah, and these how do you even keep up and evaluate seven thousand or yeah. two thousand bills you know per session yeah. so uh, there there's 
learning how to use an intern is a big goal for next year. Sure. <laughs> this uh, year I felt like I couldn't take responsibility for an intern until I figured out the ropes for myself. But next year I think that will be, uh, yeah. I'll have an intern that you will know, help You know, one me. of the things you do, and I think you, you do very well, is, uh, is connect with the public. Uh, and this goes through your social media, we were talking before. I'd like, to, I'd like to applaud your IT person because whatever she does is really, <laughs> Thank you, Donna. It's really effective. It's great, great stuff on, the, on Facebook. Uh, and I, I guess I, I think you try to use that from the ones I've read, from the posts I've read, as a two-way thing. You're trying to also encourage people to tell you what they think about these oh, things. Oh, I've always been you know, like a big uh, <laughs> banging the drum for, you know, citizen engagement. And, and that's, that's another reason why I ran for office is I do enjoy engaging with people on issues in whether we agree or we don't agree, but I, am, I appreciate hearing from people. And yeah. so, yes, and I'm just trying to paint a story so that it's not so foreign you know about you know what it's like what 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 we do on a daily basis or a week it's hard to keep up on a daily basis but yeah. i try to you know anything that seems remarkable i try to comment on it so that people can follow along yeah and there are a million issues out there one of my kind of pet peeves is the uh, uh i can't remember the one line item veto yeah because that's, that's been a perennial uh, we're going to put it in the sidetrack yeah, again. That is one of the um, the initiatives that the Reform Caucus supports, the line item veto. We came out in yeah. support of the Inspector General to, although that's that's definitely got a fiscal note attached to it. Um, but we were, I'm in favor of all of those. Yeah, and you know, it seems to me it's, it's to, to the neophyte. It seems like such a no-brainer. Of course, you want to be able to. Do right. this. Why, why would you have to do the whole thing all over again? But uh, and, and I understand that some people have concerns about uh, the language and you can't exactly copy another state's thing and yada yada. But we've been dealing with this for like five, six years now, at least. Right. There are bills that are in, and I haven't I haven't submitted one on my own. But in the I'm sure that there's truth to that. The devil's in the details of yeah. how you implement it. But in general, I would be supportive. Now, on, on all these issues, any issue that comes up before the state right. legislature, uh, one of the things you, you, you're looking for is input from people. Yes. And you want input whether they agree with what your position is or whether they disagree, right? Right. right. Now, how is that useful to the people that disagree? How is that useful to well, you? Well, just to get a sense of what, you know, people that living in the district, you know, are thinking. And I don't, uh, there was one issue on the Reproductive Privacy Act. I did get, that's what I've got the most emails about this session. I got a lot of emails. And then, but having, I had to sort through who lives in the district, who doesn't live in the district, sure. who, you know, who's for, who's against. And I, you know, I tried to uh, separate everything in yeah. my, through my email into <laughs> categories this just so that I would. Abortion rights we're talking correct, about. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Which were passed in the House, yeah. which I did support. Yeah. But not everybody in the district no, agreed with that, that decision. Yeah, and it's a very. That. Yeah, you know, and, and personal issue. Trying a lot of times in our system recently, at least, uh, you know, people have one view and other people have another view, and there's no discourse between them to try to bring those two together. And not everything in the emails with the people that were um, against uh, a lot. A lot of the information was that they were sharing as reasons were not really in my mind factually correct yeah so well i we we, we see that even at the local level yes. so, you know. <laughs> uh, let, let me just you know i think you have such a great background let me just <laughs> i want to talk to you about that you know number one you own your own business i do uh, ocean link it's a marine plumbing firm that uh, is down in melville correct you founded in 1989 but people may not know that you also have or at least had a u.s coast guard captain's license and a private pilot's license. I you know, did. You're a superwoman. <laughs> oh, thanks. So how do you balance your work as a state rep? Now, I'm sure these 
captain's license and flying and stuff take a back seat. Oh, totally. But how do you balance running a business and you know, your private life and being a state rep. Right. Well, the next two months will be, uh, you know, over the winter, my business is not because we're somewhat yeah. seasonal. Sure. Um, I haven't found it to be too much, uh, you know, January up to now has not been too uh, terrible to manage. I think uh, May and June will yeah. <laughs> will be interesting. Sure. I'm sure I will be burning the candle at both ends. <laughs> now you have employees. But I do, that, I do that, have employees. Yeah, I got great staff. So, yeah. and that obviously, I felt kind of comfortable with yeah. that. That was in place when I decided to run. That was definitely one of the well. That's great. Factors. I'm glad you did. Uh, the other thing that's interesting about you is is you've had local experience. We've mentioned it before. You know that. You did a long tour on the school committee, first as a member, but then as the chair for a yes. while. So you see both the, what it's like on a, on a committee. Committees are interesting being on <laughs> their own, but then what it's like being the chair of a committee, which is even harder to try to get, you know, herding cats, somebody <laughs> said, I think. Uh, but I, I would expect that those in the water board and the other position you had, how did that help you? to where you are today in the state I think it helps you evaluate, you know, an issue because you can see it from the other, from both sides. Um, uh, I'd like to see, I'd like to be, I'm interested in being on the HEW committee, but right now I'm on the small business committee, okay. which that has been, that's been interesting, but it's not one of the more okay so you need to get on a committee to focus on yes because then kind of issues. right because then that's when you're voting on the actual the bills to get them out of committee because yeah. if it doesn't come out of committee it never comes to the floor and yeah. that's something that you know the public should understand too i do get a lot of emails to support this or oppose this but unless that comes that bill comes out of committee Right. I won't nothing even, you can do about it. Yes, no I won't even get to weigh in. And you don't even get a chance um, to put input. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. right. So, um, yeah. I, so I, that is the process. Well, you know, I, I think uh, the fact that the Portsmouth schools have been consistently among the highest rated yes. in the state, which is good, uh, I think is uh, in large part due to you folks on that uh, on that school committee, and I applaud you for that. Well, thank you. Uh, it's always, it's, what's always interests me is, is the budget, the annual budget, and how little there is really of discretionary money it's in true. it. In the school committee in the school budget, and, and, in, and the in the town, and you're in right, the town. Yeah. right, because so much, and you know, this school is a very labor-driven endeavor so the largest yeah. part of the school committee's budget is the contract and just going back to the legislature and education since we're talking about education which since the test scores came out the, from the RICAS test that definitely has ring a bell and um, yeah. you know I can't really speak to previous years but I know this year that education is definitely a hot topic yeah. and uh, I believe there's going to be a rollout of bills even probably next week that are coming out okay. around they've uh, they've already considered we haven't voted on the full floor but the, I believe it came out a committee on um, uh, a statewide curriculum to make sure the curriculum yeah. it, it would not mandate a, uh, a a town to use the state curriculum but if but it mandates that all the curriculum be aligned with the standards and so if a district yeah. has a subject that's not aligned they will be able to go to ride and yeah. have you know curriculum provided to them terry we're out of time sorry oh, just about exactly <laughs> okay. i want to thank you for coming in today sure. and i'd like to invite you to come back anytime you'd like this, the whole that. purpose of this is kind of public information so thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And thank you it. for joining us. We'll see you next time on Portsmouth This Week.